Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we are going to be taking a look at Firefox Quantum, which is the newest release of Firefox. Now, on their website, they claim it to be faster and to use less RAM than Google Chrome. So today we're going to kind of put that to the test in some very basic tests and benchmarks and scenarios. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to look at was memory usage. Mozilla Firefox claims that it uses less memory than Google Chrome. Um, so what I did for my tests was I opened a series of websites in this order. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, CNN.com, FoxNews.com, Trump.com, and Amazon.com. While doing this, I was really looking at the responsiveness of opening new tabs and how fast the page is loaded compared to some of the less content-driven pages. Um, that we had in our selection here and for the most part on PC it was very very snappy and I actually found it to be slightly snappier than Google Chrome but when we look at the memory usage it's a completely different thing so when we head into task manager and take a look at the amount of memory Firefox is using we see that on average it's sitting around 156 megabytes for all these websites we have open as is now this by no means is not horrible and it's not the worst I've ever seen but let's take a look at the results that we get from Chrome doing this same test. Alright, so now we head over to Chrome and we do the same test. We open the websites in the same order. That's YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, CNN, Fox News, Trump, and Amazon. Now, it's not quite as snappy and quick as Firefox was, but the pages still load in a reasonable amount of time, and you still get that Chrome performance that we've all grown used to. It's a very good performing browser. But again, let's take a look at the memory. So when we open Task Manager this time, we see that it's right around 56.9 megabytes. That's about 100 megabytes less than Firefox was using. Now, um, especially on lower end systems, that can be a considerable amount of RAM. But on this system, it's not a huge deal. So next, what I did was I just opened Firefox back up, reopened all the tabs, and just kind of compared them side by side. Both browsers were open with the same amount of tabs, the same websites, and you can see the numbers stay pretty consistent here in um, Task Manager. So now we have memory usage down, but next I wanted to test performance, and I used a thing called Basemark. Um, it's web.basemark.com if you're interested. But basically it tests a whole crap load of things about your browser. It tests things like rendering time, HTML and CSS loading times, resizing window times, motion, and all kinds of stuff, frame rates, you know, you name it, it's probably tested in this thing. So I put Firefox through that test, and it came out in the end with a score of 296.18. So I put Chrome through the same test and it emerged with a 469.69, so the numbers really speak for themselves. Overall, Firefox works great on Windows and it's even a little snappier than Chrome, but you do give up a little extra system RAM and Chrome beats it in the benchmark. But let's go take a look how it performs on a Mac. So Firefox Quantum on a Mac is a completely different story, at least in my experience. I started off with the same test. I opened the same tabs and waited for all the pages to load. A few of the pages failed to load completely. They kept doing their little bounce back and forth thing up in the top bar there. And eventually I just gave up waiting and went in to look at how much system RAM it was using. And it was kind of scary how much it was using. It was using around 502 megabytes of system RAM for just those tabs, uh, compared to PC where it was 156 megabytes, so it's not nearly as well optimized. But After this, the system crashed, or hanged, or froze, whatever you want to call it, but basically uh, it was the first time this MacBook has ever crashed. So having those seven tabs open on my MacBook, uh, keep in mind this is a clean user, it's a brand new user, so there's, it's never been used before. It's using 502 megabytes and has completely locked up the system. I can't even close activity monitor, as you can see I got the little beach ball of death there. And the fan is wrapped up, ramped up higher than I have ever heard it on this MacBook before. Well, I wanted my MacBook to live another day, so I decided not to do the base mark test on it. It would probably blow it up, to be honest with you. So I went over to Chrome and proceeded to do the same test on Chrome. And let me tell you, when it comes to web browsers on Mac, 
Chrome is much snappier and much more optimized than Firefox Quantum is, uh, on Mac that is. Now, to be fair, Firefox Quantum is a relatively new release and they still have time to work bugs out, but there's a huge difference and I'm not going to be switching to Firefox Quantum anytime soon, especially if it's going to make my laptop into a bomb. Alright, so anyway, with Chrome, again, it uses significantly less amount of RAM. Now, on Mac, more so than Windows. There's a huge difference on Mac. Uh, Firefox used 502 megabytes, but Chrome here is only using about 75, and that's a huge freaking difference, if I do say so myself. Now, I know what you're thinking. You see those little Google Chrome and Firefox helper extensions in the uh, activity monitor there, and I did the math, and it really doesn't make a difference when it comes to numbers. If you add all the helpers up and Firefox, you get around 1.5 gigs of system RAM being used. If you add them up on Chrome, 0.7 gigabytes. So no matter how you how you crunch the numbers or how you look at it, Chrome is using significantly less RAM, especially on the Mac side. All right, so that's pretty much it for my tests. Were they the most scientific tests in the world? Absolutely not. Were they perfect? Absolutely not. But I think it gives you a good idea of how Firefox Quantum and software in general really does need time to become optimized for systems. On PC, it was okay, but on Mac, it was atrocious, and it, it's still got a little ways to go. But why don't you head over to Firefox or Mozilla.org or wherever you get Firefox. I usually just Google Firefox. But head on over there, download it for yourself, and let me know in the comments what system you're using it on and how you think it works. If you think I'm completely wrong and this test was stupid, which I'm sure many of you do, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I will put one up on the screen for you right now. Click it. I dare you.